Hi everyone and welcome along. Today we are going to have a go at painting some really simple cactus shapes so you can paint yourself a whole row of cacti. So grab your paints and let's get started. Right, so we're going to have some fun and draw some different cactus shapes and to start off I think it's probably really helpful to just begin with a really really simple little single cactus shape. So we're going to always draw in pencil the basic outline um, and cactuses, I'm gonna say cactuses loads, I'm sorry, you know I mean cacti. Um, I'm also not a very sort of experienced person in terms of the different sort of names of different cacti, but this is a fun, simple, more like a doodle cactus thing. So I'm gonna draw these nice sort of loopy soft shapes and then if we want, we can add in various extra branches and uh, I'm gonna draw a sort of more of a prickly pear kind of one here. So we've got our main cactus pad and then we'll have a few coming off the side and we'll just have one more, <laughs> one more here, lovely. Okay, so we've got our basic shapes, that's all we need for now for our pencil. And I'm going to begin by building up the shape uh, of the cactus using colour. And what I mean by that is there's quite a lot of texture, um, ridges going on in the cactus shapes, and we can do this all by being clever with how we paint in the colour. So what I'm doing is I'm just waking up, I've got cadmium yellow here, I've got sap green down here, and then I've got a mixture of sap green and lemon yellow here, which I always have permanently in my palette, which is just a really fantastic yellowy green colour. And we're going to begin um, with our little cactus down here, and we're going to start by painting in some faint greeny yellow lines that are going to help us create the sort of round ridged shape on the cactus. And I've got a size two brush here. It's not too small um, because these are sort of quite simple cactus doodles almost. So I'm starting at the top. I am starting with the tip of my brush squishing out into the belly of the brush and then sort of slightly retracting it to get a slightly thinner line as we go down. And what I'm doing here is even with the faintest colour we're using, I'm still even going one step further and using the unpainted space of the page to create even more ridges on the cactus. So I'm gonna do it again on this one. So right down the middle from the center. The size two brush is really great for this, I think, because as long as you've got a nice fine tip on it, it can still give you lots of control, but it allows you to do a nice broad stroke in a single go. Already, it's kind of looking quite sort of recognizably cactus-like. Okay, so for these shapes and for this one here, we'll have a nice um, similar ridge lines. But for this one here, we are going to do a prickly pear, which is more of a flattened, less textured shape. And what I'm going to do is I'm still going to create a little bit of a sort of difference and depth there. Well, how I'm going to do that? is I'm going to begin with a, quite a dilute sap green in the middle, painting this quite quickly. And I'm not quite going out to the edges, I'm just doing one shape at a time. And then very quickly, get my other color and just go round the edge 
in as few brush strokes as possible to get a lovely smooth blend. So we'll do that once again. Quite dilute sap green. Nice and fast, getting your other colour ready just so you can get a nice smooth blend. Now, even though it is mid-September, it is quite warm today and that means that your paint will dry a lot faster on a warm day so it's even more important to be swift. Okay, we're going to let those dry a little bit and move on to the next stage. Now that's touch dry, I've added a little more sap green into my yellow greeny mix and we're going to use a slightly smaller brush. I've got a two tenths brush here, pointed round, and I'm going to go back over the top and add more lines. Still following the same uh, premise of starting from the middle and the top, squishing the brush down, leaving unpainted sections, The brush being smaller means you'll need a few more brush strokes to get these lines, but I feel that it's nice to have the control a bit more, even if it does add a few more brush strokes. So at this stage, our ridged cactus shapes have got two layers of colour on and what happens is underneath that we'll see glimpses of the yellow colour, glimpses of the unpainted uh, paper but what I am going to do at this stage just with a clean wet brush is I'm just going to smooth just with a very few brush strokes, I don't want to do too many, we're just going to smooth those lines just a little bit to make it just a little more cohesive. It's very important you don't overdo this and I've waited until these are pretty much dry and this just really helps bring your piece together because I think a lot of people at this point think oh mine just looks like weird stripy sausages but do not worry because very soon you'll have a beautiful cactus. Okay, so we're going to leave those to dry a little bit longer, but for the last layer of colour for these stripes, we've got our pure sap green here, and I'm also just going to mix up a tiny bit of Prussian blue, lovely deep sort of slightly, slightly greeny blue, because we might find we want to add a little bit of that in but as I said, we'll wait for these to dry first. Touch dry once again, and this time I'm gonna take an even smaller brush. For me, that's four tenths, but for you, obviously, just make sure that you've got three brushes that sort of go down in terms of size so for you to be able to do your stripes. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the pure sap green, and I'm gonna start from the middle, and I'm going to draw in new stripes. And I really love this stage because this is when it really starts to come together. And as I fill in the central ones, they're really helping give a sense of roundness and shape. But the other thing that helps give roundness is shadow. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some sap green, add a little bit of Prussian blue, and my stripes at the side. Are going to be just this slightly more bluey, shadowy color. And it's only a subtle thing, but it does make all the difference.
This sap green I'm using is probably a bit more concentrated than the previous colours we've painted in. But there's still a nice sort of wetness to it. And adding in that Prussian blue, is, it's not making a huge amount of difference to the colour. But it is just giving a little something extra. All the while, this cactus has been sitting quietly wondering when it's going to get its next uh, bit of paint. And I am now going to wake up my brown and blue and get a bit of shadow involved because the obviously the iconic part of a cactus is the spikes, the prickles, and those need to be put in sort of with a great amount of detail and precision. And the painting in of shadow is usually done with quite a sort of sweeping brush. And of course, with these shapes, we've already got bits of Prussian blue in there really helping create depth and roundness. But for our smooth prickly pear, we don't have any shadow on it yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put shadow in now before we create all the little spikes. So what I'm going to do is just with my size two brush, and I don't want too much on the brush, is I'm just going to paint in little bits of round shadow. Just curling in on the shapes and that just really helps give it a little bit extra depth and dimension and whilst we're waiting if you want you can add a little bit more of that Prussian blue into the base of your cactus just to give it a little bit more roundness and depth. Now we have to wait for everything to dry fully and then we're going to paint in the spikes. Now I'm going to use a, a very sort of dark concentrated shadow colour because I think using pure black even in a sort of doodle cartoon style drawing is just a little bit much so I've got my my brown and blue, but I've also got Payne's Grey here, which is quite a new addition to my palette, but I really love it. It's a sort of very, very sort of dark petroly blue, but adding it into the shadow mix, it just adds an intensity there. So I'm mixing up quite a lot of it whilst I wait for these guys to dry. And then I need you to find your smallest pointed round brush. Mine's going to be the four tenths and we'll get ready to do our little spikes. So one last check, being touch dry. It's so important to make sure your, pe your paintings are completely dry before adding layers. So as this is just a nice, really simple cactus shape, we're gonna begin with the outer edge. And what I like to do is to do two little Vs for the spikes. And I just like to start around the edge first. And then the, the lines down these ridged cacti are going to be our guides for where the spikes are going to go. If you wanted to keep it really simple, you could just leave it like that. But I think it's quite fun to place in lines of spikes going down so you just got to make sure you follow the various curves that you've already painted in but I'm also making sure I don't sort of overload the cactus with too many spikes Thank you. 
and obviously the ones down the middle just making them quite short little dots. So that's a nice way to be able to paint in the spikes on your ridged cacti. For the prickly pear, the dots sort of go in a, a crisscross diagonal formation on the cactus. So for a start, I'm just going to begin by placing in our spikes around the edge. And then my V's, well, my little prickles are going to be in V shapes there, just going down a diagonal. And then just continuing along a diagonal line. And don't worry if you're, you're not in perfect diagonal formation. I don't think you need to start drawing in diagonal lines to get these right, because again, like I said, these are sort of simple cactus doodles, really, rather than anatomically correct things. And also, because a prickly pear is quite a flat, it's almost like a pad, the succulent pad, the cactus. It's not got a huge amount of roundness to it, so we don't need to worry too much about how the spikes sit at the edge of the cactus shape. I allowed it to dry fully and I've also just rubbed out the pencil which allows it to just sort of lift a tiny bit and I thought it might be really fun just for a finishing touch if I take a really diluted bit of the uh, spike mix to just paint in a few long shadows that's what I think of with cacti. If you're wondering about painting shadow, you can find some really good introductions to shadow painting in my watercolour quick fix playlist. But for now, here are your simple cactus doodles. Thanks so much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed that one. I want to say a huge thank you to my patrons for their support because that support enables us to keep creating these videos that everyone can enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, then hit the like button below and comment to let me know how you got on with that project. And of course, if you subscribe, then you'll never miss another video. Until next time, bye!